Be mindful before you fall. I only learned to stand up by falling many deaths. You have oxygen in supply. Mine came from tears housed in fears. So be sure, my friend. This is the circle of strife, not life. I could go on, but so will they. So hey. Well, my name's Munir Zamir. I was born in London to Pakistani Muslim parents. How did I get where I am today? I got here through an immense struggle. And the funny thing about my struggle is that it took into account being the son of migrants, being a child born with disability, being a child struggling with identity, being a child that struggled with trying to fit in. And then in the end, that struggle for identity and that need for belonging, that took me on a journey that sometimes even I look back on and I wonder if it was real. I went from feeling isolated, marginalized, you know, not, not knowing how to present myself to the world. I went from that to someone who just took all those things and internalized them. I ended up an angry young man. My anger led me to trying to explore things that were very difficult to understand for a young boy. I ended up with some very extreme ideas, with some very extreme opinions, and that set of ideas and opinions fused so so well with my anger that I just became someone determined that anger was the only way to answer the world. As I got a bit older, I realized that the way I looked should have never been defined just by my anger at the way I looked and my anger at the way society had treated me. Society doesn't treat difference very well. I slowly learned that the best way to deal with this was to actually not close my mind, but to open my mind. I think that also has something to do with what inspires me to this day and what inspires me in the work I do. It's that feeling that you've really got to understand yourself first. You've really got to understand who you are. If you don't know who you are, how are you going to expect the world to figure you out? And how, are, if the world can't figure you out, how can you then find your own place in it? I started thinking personally, reflecting a lot on who I was becoming, who I'd been, and I think that's what inspires me now to reach out to particularly young people, people in the 21st century, struggling with those same questions. Who am I? Where do I belong? To whom or what am I loyal? And I think I do that work and I try to engage those issues because I want to be a small part, just a tiny part, of a very big effort to change this world for the better, to change people. If people can change for the better and if people can do the right things, the good things, beneficial things, if we can do beneficial things in our own small little way, then our small efforts will turn into big change. And I still believe that, and that's why I do it. How I'm changing the world in my small little way, I think about being a young man, doing my art, my drawing, how I stopped doing it, how my soul was yearning for expression. Eventually, after all these journeys, these dark journeys I had about trying to find myself, I realized sincerely that the pen is mightier than the sword. I know that now because my pen is part of my soul. It brings out that anxiety, but it brings out that hope. And when you share, people share back with you. And I think that's why my kind of driver behind why I want to achieve some small part of change, why I want my effort to be worthwhile, is because we've got to share in that effort. So I've got to do my part before I throw stones at other people and blame them. And you know, you get setbacks. People attack you, they mock you because you care. It's funny, people don't attack other people because of their hate. They believe hate some kind of default mentality that justifies how you live and behave. But when someone talks about love or when someone talks about mercy, everyone laughs at you. Everyone pretends like love and mercy aren't the most important things in the world. The funny thing about that, it's not even funny. As a Muslim, I believe that Allah's mercy will always outweigh his wrath. And that's evidenced in the Quran itself. The setbacks, for me, they're just part of the struggle. And the struggle never ends. And that's the whole point. There is no ease without struggle. There's going to be no change until we find the motivation to change. 
And right back to the beginning, where do you find the motivation to change? You find it in yourself. That's me, that's what I do, hopefully. <laughs>